Well, here's my studio for today. To celebrate getting 500 subscribers, I'm trying something a little different. So I'm going to go for a walk today. And while I walk, I'd like to tell you about the five features of MuseScore 4 that I'm excited about. Let's go. Musical 4 has been under development for a while now and to be honest it's looking pretty awesome. I really can't wait for them to finish or at least finish something so that we can start using it. The Alpha is coming out very very soon and of course that's going to be very buggy but it's still going to be amazing to see and I've had a little look at the private Alpha to see what kind of things are coming. So here are the top five features that I'm excited about coming in Musical 4. The first big feature change coming to MuseScore 4 is that the UI, the user interface, has been hugely redesigned. It has a dark mode, very easy to swap to, which is always great. It looks really cool, it looks really professional. The UI in general just looks more professional, user-friendly. Lots of the elements that do the similar thing are grouped together. So we have a section down the bottom for viewing elements, and the top right for playback elements. There's a whole bar for note input, which has a lot of the things that we need. And of course, it still has the palette along the left. And of course, any of these are customizable. You can move them around, undock them, dock them. You can make MuseScore what you want it to be. Included in this new UI design is the instruments panel, which looks like a really good place to hide instruments whenever you're not needing them to add staves, to add new instruments, uh, just a general all-round useful thing to have. We also have the properties panel, which is the old inspector. And it can do everything that the old inspector did, which is fantastic. I, I love that inspector. It was really useful for, you know, getting to those tiny details that you need in your score. But now the property panel has a couple of extras, which are great. We can change the playback properties of any element in the score. For now, that's uh, still in development, but it will be very useful. And let's just get down here. And when I make a big selection, like a bar or a few bars, I can filter that selection with these buttons in the properties panel. Really useful stuff. Whoa. Feature number four sounds small but it's going to make a big difference. And that is articulation on the main note input tool toolbar. It has been so frustrating to go into the palettes every time to get articulation. So I think it's fantastic that they finally put this on the main toolbar. And there's another big benefit. They have tool tips. So if I forget the shortcuts, which I do all the time, they're right there at my disposal and I can find them really quickly. I think this is also going to have fantastic potential for being customizable so that composers can go and find their favorite particular articulation and add it in there, instead of it being in the palettes. And finally, feature number five. This also has huge potential for the future. This is the integration of VSTs as playback devices with MuseScore. So if you don't know, a VST is a digital device that can play back sound from MIDI. VST is the thing that creates the sound and defines what your timbre is. So in previous versions of MuseScore, we've used sound fonts which have kind of been an open source thing and it's been great and it's been working and you can customize it. You can go and find your own sound fonts and even make your own. But VSTs are the industry standard. They're used in everything from film scoring and TV scoring um, to big production. So it's great to see MuseScore taking this on board. So VSTs have the potential to make our scores sound a lot better. Now, at the moment, it's a pretty simple integration. Um, they've kind of made sure that, that the VST will open and work, hopefully without crashing. But the integration of VSTs into MuseScore has huge consequences for the software, moving it slightly away from just about notation and engraving and into the realm of audio and, and almost a, a DAW, a digital audio workstation, where composers can write the music in notation 
and at the same time be able to create the sound that they're looking for and be able to tweak those elements to have key switches to change your digital libraries and there are some great digital libraries out there so a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel uh, it's really great to see the support that i'm getting now i guess it's time for me to get out of this valley let's go of course a big shout out has to go to the MuseScore developers this thing is open source which means most of these people are not getting paid Muse Group does own the company, and so there are uh, some core developers, but it's people donating their time to improve the software, and it's fantastic. So thank you to the Muse Core developers.